Hi, my name is Tommy. Uh, I'm team lead at Solvion. These are some ways to reach me, but it's not about me today. It's about the content and the content of the next couple of minutes is the Microsoft Teams framework, Teams FX. And we are today looking at the .NET side of things. Um, I tried to create this, I would say slide, I think cool kids now call it infographic or something else um, to, to make clear some of the pretty nice choices Microsoft did in terms of naming, uh, meaning there is Teams FX, there's Teams Toolkit, and if you read through documentation or read through Twitter or read through uh, different blogs, you will see a lot of mixture of all those different names. And uh, this thing here tries to make it a little bit clearer uh, what is part of Teams FX and what are the yeah components of it. So Teams FX actually is a uh, library that targets more than one language. TeamsFX targets React and .NET. So not only the client side, but also the server side. Um, and that's just the state of today. Um, there is no, no fixation on only two, those two platforms. I'm pretty sure there are already ideas on, on how to get different uh, text, text stacks also into this Teams framework. But the idea is that as a developer, I get something where I can start already with this, yeah, the need of authentication, all those things that we would need to do anyways, all the time we create enterprise applications, that this is already done in a library. Um, and of course, this is available for React. Um, that's basically um, what Victor was referring to compared to the uh, Pinpio Teams generator. So all those scaffolding, all those creation of elements. Um, and the architecture of the Teams framework is that, that there is a CLI in place where currently the team is working on making like one CLI to be able to use it on multiple platforms and multiple technology stacks. So in React and in .NET, we are not there yet. As in general, just to, to keep that in reference, we are still talking about something that is in preview. We are hoping or we are like kind of waiting for build and hopefully, fingers crossed, there is a, a release of Teams FX, in, in my case, for .NET uh, coming. And we will see later today that there is, were some changes, apparently this week uh, with Teams uh, FX.NET. So kind of good feeling that there will be something in the coming weeks that will be released. Um, but then there is the, the wording of the Teams Toolkit. And the Teams Toolkit basically is just the extension that you use in Visual Studio Code for React or Visual Studio for .NET and Blazor programming. Um, as we will focus on, on .NET today, uh, the path is that you will see this sample application uh, that is basically in there out of the box. So what's in the box? And of course, there are seven points for all that don't get the reference with what's in the box. There are seven points here listed. Um, F5 experience, uh, you open up Visual Studio, press F5, and you're good to go. And also the framework uh, already comes with tools and comes with uh, configuration options to create Azure AD application, but also to create Azure resources and to deploy them. We will see that in the demo. So there's a pretty much thinking already there how to really deploy stuff, not only run it locally on machine. Single sign-on is basically built in and ready to go. We will see that and how is that, how this is done in the newest version, of course. Uh, everything we will see in Blazor is on top of the JavaScript SDKs because technically uh, the Blazor implementation is to some extent a wrapper to what is available through the JavaScript SDK. Um, there is a built-in Microsoft a Graph authentication client so that we can use the SSO token for Teams to then make our calls through Microsoft Graph, for example. And uh, they changed a little bit the way how on the .NET side you install uh, the Teams Toolkit, it used to be a uh, extension. That's the thing when you open up Visual Studio, click on uh, extensions, and then you browse through basically like the, the NuGet feed, all the possible extensions that are available, and they moved it to components. Components are those kind of artifacts in Visual Studio that you deploy or install through the Visual Studio installer. Um, that changed with the version 17.1 of Visual Studio that was released, if I remember correctly, in February 15 this year. Uh, Teams Toolkit moved to the component way, and now basically it's part of the updates that you will get with Visual Studio at the moment. They are thinking of maybe going a, a 
also in a way that they just update the component, but at the moment they are heads down in the code to get everything for a GA release ready, and then they need to yeah decide what would be the upgrade and update story. And we will see, of course, there are Blazor templates uh, at the moment for a bot and a tab, and that's basically what we are looking at it right now. So I open up Visual Studio 22 preview. That's important because we are looking at the latest and greatest. So we are looking at the version that's available since two days uh, with the latest and greatest also from the Teams Toolkit. Remember, preview. So we're looking at stuff that you should not use in production yet, uh, but I think it's important to already know what will be available in the future. I click on create a new project, wait a couple of seconds for my Visual Studio instance here, and here it is, Microsoft Teams app. That's the template, it's the, yeah, the wizard that we got, will now go through to create or scaffold a new project. Click on next, give it a cool name, uh, PNP demo, include the current date. I'm good with the name. Okay, create. And then that's already a screen that changed multiple times uh, through the journey uh, of this toolkit. Um, we are now asked for, do we want to include a tab and a bot or both? We will start with a tab, it's way simpler. And of course, you can then create a bot as well if you want to later on, but let's start just with a tab and I click on create. Takes a couple of seconds and then Visual Studio hopefully opens up with our new solution and project. Here we are. And now we are seeing basically um, yeah, outlined the structure of the, the project. We will walk through the, uh, the structure first, then we'll do a short demo and look at all the options that are available in terms of what we get from the, from the scaffold project. So first of all, that's a Blazor server application. So there are a couple of artifacts that are already known probably to everyone that already created the Blazor server application. Important, not Wasm, not WebAssembly. We're talking Blazor server here. So we have our program CS, we're using .NET 6. So it's all the greatness of .NET 6 and the minimal stuff you need with namespace, global usings, all that stuff is possible. But of course, there are Razor files and then there are pages and components. So what's the, the first thing? We have our page here, we have a tab. And as you probably already can think of, let me check here. Um, I want to do that first because it's not existing. I'm careful. There is a, a tab. So that's basically the first thing uh, the first endpoint that we want to reach because that's the endpoint of the application that we want to work in Teams with. But before we do that, there is a nice getting started uh, text file that basically guides you through through all the steps, takes care of ng-rock if you're using uh, the bot part because you need tunneling to for the bot framework to recognize your endpoint. We don't need that in our case because we are only working with a tab here. So there is something we can skip to step three. Let's do that. And then here you see select project Teams Toolkit. And that's new in that release that we can go to Teams Toolkit under project and click on configure Microsoft Teams app. I will do that right now. That's important. That used to be part of the automatic scaffolding. So what is the Teams Toolkit now doing? It's creating an uh, Azure AD registration app registration. You see that now in my, in my console here uh, and creating manifest files and all those kind of things that we need to be able to run our Teams application. And it's very cool that it's now on click and not automatically when we create stuff. So we would have the option to yeah, prepare something, to set something up in the way that we want it and not automatically uh, something gets created. That's important. So I don't like uh, templates or solutions they, that go take my just initial information and go to the cloud and do something there. Um, if you have another question, how the heck does the toolkit now know what account to use? That's because I already used it yesterday and it remembered the account. Um, if you do it the first time, you basically get a login uh, screen from Azure that says, okay, pick your account, what uh, account should we connect this instance to? And then you always use the same basically account and you can change that very easy. Also something new, back in the days, you would have to reinstall the toolkit to make that work. Um, 
what we are now able to do is that I can click now on basically F5. Need to let the solution build, of course. And then uh, with the launch settings, it will open up a local browser here. Let's just wait for a couple of seconds and the browser should start with the yeah app install screen or the add an app screen, however you want to call it, uh, with our demo here. Here we are. So you see the name, PNP demo, our current date, that's the artifact or the, the name we gave it through the wizard. It says local debug, click on add. And then I will get an static tab um, with a, yeah, a super simple starting page in here. Um, the first thing that we that we need to understand here is that this tab, of course, is now yeah, iframed into my Teams application and still it already has my name because it is using the built-in uh, SSO token or the token that comes with the JavaScript SDK and takes my name out of the token. Um, that's the first thing. Uh, and the second thing is, uh, yeah, that's basically the, the code line, but we will have a look at the code in a couple of seconds. Second thing is I can click on authorize here and then I will see uh, the consent screen because in the back end, uh, the authorized button basically wants to make a call to Microsoft Craft to get my user picture, my email, I think. Um, that's something the app has permission to it, but it needs to be consented first. I'm using my Microsoft 365 developer tenant here. So with the same account, I'm of course a global admin. I can consent on behalf of my entire organization. Click on accept and I will get my picture back. Technically, what happened now is that for the first run, just the initial load of the tab, uh, the Teams Toolkit used the SSO token it got from Teams to get my basic information. And in the second run, it used that SSO token to get a graph token. And let's have a look at the code, what actually was happening right now here. Um, first of all, we opened up the tab. Um, tab is pretty, pretty, straightforward and I will make it a little bit um, font size a little bit bigger. So hopefully this is, this is readable for everyone. Uh, have my component here and there's a welcome component. So the project already shows you like the laser way of working with, with using components, very simple. Uh, I have components here and I can define basically uh, what is part of my welcome component. And you see here a couple of fluent tabs because it's already using Microsoft Fast Components, a Fluent UI, that's a Blazor wrapper um, from the, the Fluent team, and that is available and built in through NuGet packages already in the project. So um, yeah, a couple of examples how you can also use um, the Fluent UI already built in in the project. Remember, I'm on the screen right now. There are a couple of tabs, it's those things here that are defined in those Fluent tabs here. And then there is one thing, another component, it is just called graph, nothing more. So we have a graph component over here and that basically takes part uh, or, or takes care of the part in the code that we saw first here with the button and that no, now shows us our proof, a profile photo because you see here, we show the Fluent button that we clicked on to click to authorize if we need consent. If we have consent and we are loading, we're just showing the profile card. And if we already have a profile loaded, then we show the profile card with parameters. How do we get those parameters? How is that connecting or how is the connection working here? Um, that's typical Blazor way of doing things. And I will stop the debugging for a second because I'm pretty sure there are people on the call that are like, what is he doing here? There's C sharp now in the client side, basically mixed with HTML and there's a, a code block down here. I don't like that. No problem with that. Let's go over here, create a new item. Let's make that a class file. And we call that graph.razor.cs. Visual Studio realized that, okay, it needs to be under the Razor component here. I get a short error message because I need to make that a partial class because how Blazor is working, build it, or Blazor is basically building on top of the Razor file already a code behind file. 
and there is a class already present that is not shown in Visual Studio. So I would need to make it a partial class to be part of the package that gets sent to the compiler in the end of the day. And now I can go into my Razor component and go up to the code block, take everything from here. Yep, everything, and I mean everything. Here we are. And move that over to my backend file. That's basically uh, the, the idea how you can, of course, separate your implementation of the uh, UI and your code behind files. There are now a couple of uh, yeah, usings that I would need to add. Let's do that for a second. But if we go through the code uh, first, there are parameters. OK, and then we have the, the user profile. That's basically Microsoft Graph component. So you see that or a Microsoft Graph class from the, from the Microsoft Graph client SDK. And we see simple laser lifecycle class here on initialized async. We are starting. We are questioning, has the user permissions for a current scope? Over here, user read. And if that's the case, we are showing the profile. So it's typical uh, C-sharp code now. But of course, uh, using what the yeah, Teams Toolkit basically offers us. So you see here, profile is a request graph.me request get async. Pretty straightforward because in the end of the day, that's a graph service client directly coming from the Microsoft Graph.net SDK. So that's not nothing special for Teams. The thing that is special for Teams is in the graph service client in here because they have a graph authentication provider in here. And Let's include that namespace here as well, because we are using Microsoft Teams FX to create a graph authentication provider that implements a certain interface, of course, because that basically takes um, the token that it gets from your uh, JavaScript SDK from Teams in the background, infuses it in the .NET side of things, and creates a graph service client based on top of that bearer token that is exchanged in the backend for you. That's super important. Uh, how is that done? Um, basically, they're using uh, the JavaScript interop options that, you, that are available just in Blazor. Because if we have a look in here, there is, of course, some kind of JavaScript. I hate to admit it. You need a couple of lines to make that work. But if you have a look here, there's JavaScript file that, yeah, if you're familiar with Teams development, there is an initialization uh, method uh, function that you just click on or, or call Microsoft Teams, the SDK to initialize, to get the context, and all those different methods you need basically to make a Teams application work. And that's basically encapsulated in this Teams file here, because through JavaScript interop, uh, a, a base uh, feature of Blazor, you're loading a module here, and then you're just invoking those functions. In the .NET side, in, this, in the um, C Sharp side, you just click on Get Teams Context or you call Get Teams Context. And that's basically invoking the connected or configured JavaScript method in the background. And through the JavaScript SDK that we are all familiar from Teams, we get the token. And basically, so it's going through the, the whole yeah, chain coming back to my graph file so that I can say here, okay, get a new graph authentication provider, make that work, and okay, get a client and do the simple thing here and make a profile a picture request and we're good to go. So in case we want to take that a little bit further, uh, what we can do is now, just need to make that reference again. Uh, of course, we could add now uh, our own calls to Microsoft Graph, our own, yeah, let's say we want to load uh, multiple teams or we want to uh, have a look at some options, some, some data endpoints in Microsoft Graph, no problem. You just can call it from here and use what you're already familiar with in terms of the .NET SDK client from Graph. But be aware, if I switch over to my Azure tenant for a second, and let's reload that. and search or create that filter that. So you see, that's basically the 
Azure app registration that got created uh, when I clicked on project uh, Microsoft Teams Toolkit and, and create the stuff. And of course, I would need to add more API permissions in here. So if I want to make additional calls to graph and if I want to make additional parts working here, uh, I would need, of course, uh, to add scopes, add permissions in here, because if I just would call the graph now and let's say I want to, I don't know, list all the teams that I'm part of, it would get an, an unauthorized error because the application in the backend using the on behalf of flow isn't uh, scoped to that uh, resource. And then of course I would not go to in there and change that in the API permissions. One last thing I want to show is that of course um, those components and everything we are using in here, you can also do some, some, some cool things because you can go in there and add another project to that solution and you can add a Razor class library. So we are using now Razor class library. Let's make that PNP today's date library. Yeah, good for me. You see, uh, adding now uh, a new project in my solution here. Uh, I go in here and make a reference, a project reference, just for the sake of the demo to that component library. Uh, and that would allow me to reuse uh, yeah, common components in my Teams application. We will do that now for a very, very short and, and simple use case, but just think of it. You could extract all the components from the demo, take them to your own Razor library project, and then with the things that are coming with, with .NET Maui, for example, there is something that is called Blazor Hybrid, where you can use Blazor components to create applications for the desktop, for Android, for iOS, for, yeah, teams, so to speak, with the same component library. So that opens up a lot of options for, for the .NET developers in the future to create stuff only once and reuse it. And we want to, or I want to show a short use case, what that can look like. I have something prepared over here. So let's take that prepared component and add it here. So it should be just like this. So I create something like a proper background uh, file. And I would need also to add, of course, the actual JPEG file I want to have be part of that solution. Let's add that in here as well. Uh, so we have a component that is just our, our proper background and that basically just wraps whatever we are putting in the component with a class or in a diff with a class and, and I have a Razor file that says, okay, I want that to be part of that uh, folder in here. Let me double check. I need to move that file over here to the dub, dub, dub root folder. Here we are. And then I would go into my tab page. Where are we? Pages, tab, take my welcome part. Uh, and I could say proper background here. Take that. And basically marshalling all the samples or all the, the, the built-in sample with my new proper background file. Let's try to make a build. All right, let's create a build basically. Yeah, 10 seconds and you will see where I'm heading because I'm installing now this component here, or this, this, this Teams application again. And you see a nice background with a nice handover actually to Chris. <laughs> Me! Awesome. <laughs> Very cool, Tommy. <laughs> Thank you. Some really, really cool stuff. Pasted some links in the chat associated to Tommy's demo, and I'll let you answer any questions in the chat. Mm -hmm.